Ravi, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a great time to be in AI. I think uh, in the last couple of years, um, there has been a huge buzz and everybody jumps on the bandwagon called AI, John AI. But we're also realizing this is not just a, a buzzword. This is going to revolutionize the way I, we as human beings behave in the future. So it has a huge impact. So I wanted to learn from you the landscape of AI to get some good understanding. Yeah. Completely agree with you that uh, this is going to completely change how we live and how we work. <clears throat> I am a student of history, big uh, uh, student of the Renaissance. And if you think about printing press, steam engine, railroad, how it completely changed from an agrarian to a, a more industrial society. I think computer, internet and now generative AI is going to completely transform our society in a way that we don't yet know what it will look like. But a few things definitely are emerging. Right? I'll just give you one example. Just after uh, ChatGPT came out in January, I was visiting India. I have a very good friend. She works with large nonprofits, uh, runs surveys on the efficacy of programs. And her job is to then write reports, give them recommendations and so on. And she showed me how she would, they would do the surveys, have a spreadsheet. She showed me how for each question she would take the answer, stick it into the chat GPT, get an explanation or an insight. Take a collection of insights that form a logical section, put it in a chat GPT, get a section summary. Take a set of section summaries and get an executive summary and recommendations. Now, it's not perfect, but what took her four hour, four days, now she can do in four hours, where she's editing and maybe creating and building on top of it, rather than doing all of this, what has now become mundane work. This wasn't mundane work even one year ago. And the potential of this, if you think, a lot of work is very similar work across enterprises. A lot of white collar work is this kind of work. So just like how when cloud came, it took away this mundane managing servers, etc., and put it in hands of the hyperscalers and the cloud providers and let us now innovate and build applications and build platforms and systems. I think the same thing is going to be is happening in the world of work. So to me it's an exciting time but it's also a very, uh, it's a, there's a lot of unknowns in the road ahead. The other thing is um, uncertainty, right? Uh, we hear in the media reports that, you know, it's going to take away so many opportunities that people have already been performing in terms of their work. Uh, but you also mentioned that don't be scared of uncertainty, adopt uncertainty, because we live through uncertainties at times, and human beings throughout history have been very resilient to adopt to all the ev evolutions. So uh, again, I'm trying to understand, you know, how people should be taking it in a positive way. I think the one fundamental shift is we, are, we look for certainty in life, I think this new world, the level of uncertainty will be higher. And learning to thrive in it, not just manage it and survive, but actually learning to thrive in uncertainty. How can you make uncertainty your friend? How can, because the flip side of uncertainty is opportunity. If everything is known, there's no opportunity. So this is the flip side, so that how do you embrace it? I mean, in the morning, Jensen was talking about the pain and suffering, embracing it. Right? It's the same idea of how do you embrace that uncertainty and use that to, like I said, the three A's, serve people, minimize harm, and uh, collaborate with people. If you can figure that out, then people who do that will be very successful in this world. And I think we will learn those skills. These are basic human things that we know how to do. We just have to do them and develop them. And then the adoption of technology in two different ways. One is uh, startups, mm -hmm. very agile, young teams, very driven, very passionate. And then bigger companies, bigger companies like yours, you know, where people come and work in your teams and people who will aspire to work for your companies. So how do you think, because two different approaches. And since you have also been an entrepreneur in early avatar, I thought, you know, I should ask you this. How do you think we can help them prepare for two different mindsets? As an entrepreneur, just like when cloud came and there are companies that are cloud first, they just were born in the cloud. They don't know any non-cloud world. Like that, if I was an entrepreneur today, I would be Genea first. Because what Genea gives me is actually 
even if I'm a small three-person startup, I can have a sales department, a marketing department, a finance department, because that kind of technology exists. So I can suddenly do things, like even a year ago, it would have taken 50, 100 people to do, I can do with five, 10 people. Which means I can, my ability to innovate, the ability to move fast, the ability to do new things, try new things, experiment, this is where the flip side of uncertainty, right? I can experiment, etc. So that is what I would um, uh, advise startups, is to be genuine, really think about where all can you use it to drive your productivity. If you're writing an email, if you're creating a marketing campaign, use it. If you're uh, going to write product documentation, use it. So, how can I be completely native to it, is how I would think about it. In bigger companies, the one thing I will say to startups though, while you do it and move fast, be responsible. Be very clear, if it's, if it's a customer's confidential data, don't just stick it into ChatGPT, have your own private <laughs> ChatGPT and things like that. Be responsible while doing this. Bigger companies, it's a different problem. We have to actually make a transition from, it's like pre-cloud companies, how to become cloud companies. The same way we have pre-gen AI, and we will do it function by function. Some functions are easier than others. Our compliance and other requirements will be different. So for a bigger companies, I would really look at, in your domain, if whatever your domain is, how is gen AI going to affect it? When is that going to happen in big companies or in the particular big company you're interested in? And how can you be a part of it and how can you help improve the efficiency, the productivity of the function or the quality of that function? And then it'll be interesting to learn again from you, uh, you know, your work at ServiceNow. It's a great company, have done tremendously well in the last few years especially. So how do you then adopt these and then inspire your team to do better things? So at ServiceNow, our strategy is uh, we are a workflow platform. So for me, and that's one of the things I emphasized, it's how does AI manifest in the workflow to serve some human being? This is where we anchor. And then we work backwards to what model do we need, where should it run, what is the security, et cetera, et cetera. So we see tremendous potential in this Gen AI plus workflow. I mean, we have a partnership with NVIDIA, for example, and it's part of it. The um, key thing for us is we are not in the model's arms race. We actually allow, if you as a customer want to bring another model into our platform, we actually, the first thing we built is a controller that lets you put other models in our platform. These can be third-party models, which are Llama, uh, ChatGPT, Bard, etc. Or some companies build their own LLMs and you can bring that into our platform. So for us, it is orchestrating the Gen AI across all of this. That is our big strategy. Now for very purpose-built use cases of service now, like code, completion with, uh, within the service now uh, ecosystem or uh, fulfiller agent kind of experiences there we actually provide our own LLMs because we can provide them at a better security better cost point uh, better um, price point domain specific LLM so we have a strategy where we we where we do well we provide the AI and but we also allow customers to bring others to work there and my role is really to enable that whole ecosystem Ravi, again, thank you for sharing the thoughts. You have been very articulate in describing the landscape and focusing on the niche areas where people should pick up. Again, thank you. Really appreciate the help. Thank you and thank you for having me.